So after walking through all those different methods for adding dynamic control at the beginning of our mastering chain and some basic bus compression, I've opted for the DCAM bus comp here. And I've really replicated the settings that we were using maybe a couple of videos back. Um, this is one of my favorites and I've decided to go with it. So there we go, it's set up. Um, you can see that I've just got a couple of dB of compression. I want to ensure that the, uh, the bus compressor is not on in the mixer. Great. So we're going to go back to the rack and this is our only compression that's happening really. And the next step for me is adding a bit of EQ. Now again, there are now quite a few EQs in Reason and we can, we've can we got a pretty good choice. Uh, but a good starting point are the M-Class processors. These are created by the propeller heads really for mastering or for, you know, sort of really critical uh, critical processing. And I'm going to go to effects. Uh, I'm going to go to um, the Reason devices. And I'm going to go to M-Class Equalizer. So the M-Class EQ is, like I say, a good starting point. I like to put it straight after the compression. Some people like to change the order, and I would strongly suggest that you experiment with the order of your mastering plugins. What I'm saying here is all a suggestion. It's, you know, what I do from, you know, using my experience and what works for me. But obviously, if you prefer to put your EQ before your compressors, there is no written in stone law here so you can do what you want but I, I like to do it afterwards I find it's a more transparent result um, I don't like to compress EQs because I find that if I add high end or I add low end I can't really hear what I'm doing because the compressor then alters what the EQ is doing so I like to add my compression add that control and then start to EQ so in this case we can do some really cool stuff there's some sort of mastering grade tricks in here for instance starting off at the low cut It'll low cut from 30 hertz and it's a really musical, uh, really musical shelf. And a lot of people like to do that. It gets rid of the really deep, deep subsonics that you're really not going to hear on even the largest club systems really don't go down this deep. You know, some of them will, but realistically, even a very, very large club system, you hit this button here and have a nice easy curve on the 30 hertz subsonics and it's still going to sound deep, okay? What it's going to do is enable you to push more level through the rest of the mastering chain. You're not going to be fighting all that jelly subsonics uh, down at the very low end and pushing them through a limiter and probably robbing yourself of, of uh, needed perceived volume because we all know how much people love that. So the next step is that we start to look at sort of high and low end possibly. I like to boost a little bit of highs, you know, uh, often um, if it needs it, of course. Um, but what we've got is a sort of a nice low cue point. We're going to be looking at cue points in more detail in the next video, but we can just add small amounts of gain. You can see that this is stepped very slightly and you really only be, want to be adding a couple of dB in mastering. You don't really want to be doing anything more than that. So we're probably going to go from say about eight or nine thousand kilohertz here. So nice and high, just adding a bit of air. You can see that there. And of course, if you want to add this sort of typical smile, smile sort of EQ, you can do the same on the low end. Go maybe everything above 110 ish. Again, nice low cues. And this is subtle stuff. This is just like the compression. And I want to add a little, a few high mids as well, and then I'm going to remove. So I'm going to go from about two or three, and then I want to remove a little bit of 300, just to get rid of a little bit of low mid mud. Again, very small amounts. And this is just the cue point of the bell filters in the center. You can see these bell filters as opposed to shelving filters which are going to be altering everything above and below the frequencies we've selected. So there's like sort of a typical sort of sweetening curve. This is very hi-fi loudness but this mix really doesn't need any fixing. It doesn't need any serious alteration. So it's nice just sometimes to sweeten those highs and lows. And we're starting to hear how this is building a picture. I'm going to bypass all of these. but it's very subtle. This is what we want. We want it subtle. We want it nice and easy. We want it transparent. 
we're trying to add five five percent realistically of quality to the end mix if the mix is good all you need to do is keep polishing with these processes as you, as you move we're not fixing anything here because this mix is okay i'm demonstrating it with a pretty tight mix and uh, we're just enhancing very slightly as we move through and really optimizing that would be a good word optimizing the mix as we master so in the next video, I'm going to move away from the M-Class equalizer and I'm going to show you actually the equalizer on the console. The reason I'm going to do this is we've got an analyzer in there and I'm going to be able to show you how to use cue points to your advantage and how to make sure you're using the right sort of curves uh, in mastering and using the right, what I like to call, broad strokes.